Finn, who holds a PhD from Technical University of Denmark and is now also the co-founder and CEO of Treble Technologies, will tell us more about this platform with the presentation wave-based virtual acoustics integrated into the building design process. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Hello, everyone. It's absolutely great to be with you all here today. Uh, thanks to Echophone for hosting this great event. It's always fun to be in a building full of, I don't know how many, 200 acoustics people. Uh, so it's just great to be with you. Um, so my talk is about a new technology and a new piece of software for acoustic simulations and acoustic design. And the whole purpose of all of this work is to try to make it more efficient, more easy, more robust, and hopefully just more fun to work with acoustics and design acoustics for the built environment. So, outline of my presentation, I will give a short introduction to the company, Trouble Technologies, and explain where we're coming from and so on. Give a high-level overview of this platform that we're building, the simulation platform. And then take a peek under the hood and explain a little bit the technology itself. Um, this will be the sort of nerdiest part of the presentation, so please hang in with me as we go through that. No math equations, though, I promise. And then end with a couple of examples of benchmarks where we compare measurements and simulations and see how it all turns out. So the company was founded in 2020, uh, but the roots actually go back to many years of academic research prior to that time, mostly coming out of DTU. Um, and the team has grown to around 30, 35 people now. Lots of, as I write here, passionate and brilliant sound nerds whose expertise is sound simulation and spatial audio. And the mission is, of course, to make the world a better sounding place. This is the great team that's been building this platform. It's a mixture of audio and acoustics experts, uh, computational math, simulation science, machine learning, software engineering, and so on. And we happen to be based in Reykjavik, Iceland, out of all places on Earth. Uh, it's actually a great place to, to build a startup. Uh, the ecosystem is very nice, but I will mention that we've kind of already now drained the acoustics talent pool in Iceland. Uh, but that's a luxury problem for us. <laughs> all right. The platform treble. So we typically speak about it as a platform of virtual sound meaning it's a piece of software that has functionality relating to sound simulation on the one hand and sound rendering or oralizations on the other hand. And what we're trying to bring to the table with this new piece of software is essentially three things. First of all, uh, better accuracy. Uh, that is brought about through our new simulation technology, which I'll explain in more details in a second which can yield more accurate results, which in turn hopefully reduces risk in, in acoustics design and sort of increases confidence in, in the quality of design. So that's part one, better accuracy. Part two is a better workflow, trying to make the whole process of doing acoustics design more seamless and, and efficient, reducing manual labor and so on. And as I write here, really exploiting the power of the cloud to make the whole, which brings sort of flexibility and scalability. We can run many simulations simultaneously. It's easy to collaborate with, with uh, colleagues, history is backed up and those kinds of things. So that's part two. And part three is then improving oralizations, so taking them to the next level. Being able to both see the model that you're designing and hearing it at the same time, uh, being able to interact with the design in real time, for example, compare different design options, uh, being able to move around and so on. So just kind of trying to take this to the next level. So this is what we're trying to bring to the table. You guys be the judge of whether we're successful or not in doing that, but that's at least sort of uh, what we're trying to do. Uh, here's an overview of how the platform is structured. So the centerpiece of the platform is this web application, which is the main user interface where people set up simulations. The simulations themselves then run in the cloud, and then results come back to the web app where you can look at graphs and numbers and things like that, and you can uh, do these oralizations. And then in an effort to make the workflow more efficient, we have uh, changed a little bit the way geometry is in imported into the software. So we, we have a sort of plug-in in SketchUp, uh, which kind of live links the 3D model to the acoustic simulation tool. So you don't have to be exporting and importing files. 
Uh, you just with one click in the in the plugin, the model propagates over to the simulation tool. And then if you want to change something and do an iteration on the design, that's very seamless and and and, and uh, efficient. So that's sort of a high level overview of the platform. If I now go under the hood and discuss a little bit the simulation technology itself. So our approach to room acoustic simulations is a hybrid approach where we combine geometrical acoustics methods on the one hand and then wave-based simulation methods on the other hand. Wave, uh, geometrical acoustic simulations, they have been around for a long time. That's sort of the industry standard approach to, to doing acoustic simulations. This is essentially a high frequency approximation, so it works well at high frequencies. It also tends to be quite fast, but the drawback is that in the lower frequency range, the, the accuracy can suffer uh, because there we tend to have a lot of wave phenomena, diffraction and interference and so on. And then wave-based methods, they sort of more or less have the opposite pros and cons, uh, very accurate inherently, inher inherently account for diffraction and wave phenomena, so particularly good in the low to mid frequency range, but computationally have been always quite heavy. So a natural approach would be then to combine these two, and that's not a new idea per se, it's been researched for quite some time. So do the wave based at the lower frequencies and geometric acoustics at the high frequencies. But it's never really found its way to kind of practical usage, this hybrid approach, because it has always been so computationally heavy, the wave based part of it. So this is what we set out to address in this research work uh, prior to founding Treble, is to try and accelerate wave-based simulations and get them to the point where they can actually be used in practice. And that was many years of hard work, but in the end, we ended up with something that was quite nice and uh, is, uh, is shown in this little picture here, quite uh, faster than what had been available up until that point. So now we can actually do these wave simulations uh, in big rooms for a decent part of the spectrum and this way increase the accuracy of the simulations. So a couple more details about the wave engine. It's using a DGFEM uh, formulation. That's a numerical method that we use for the simulations, which has uh, lots of benefits. It can solve complex geometries very well. It, it's very parallelizable, which is a key to why we can accelerate the simulations and uh, low memory footprint, so we can easily do large spaces. For the high frequency range, we also have a very advanced uh, geometrical acoustics engine, which is a combination of image source for early reflections and ray methods for late reflections. But it is pressure-based or phased uh, uh, geometrical acoustics engine. So uh, we can model the boundaries more precisely and we trace the phase uh, in, the, in the simulation. Okay, now as Chell Ho talked about uh, quite a bit in his talk, and we all know in this room, you know, materials have a huge impact on the acoustics of, of rooms. And by having this kind of new simulation technology, the wave engine and the phase geometric engine, then we can actually, that opens up the opportunity to model materials in a more precise way than what's been possible up until now. So where we actually model the materials in terms of impedance. Um, so we have built a very large database of materials that comes with, with the platform where you can where we have sort of physically correct uh, impedances behind every material. And then we've also built a method for converting traditional absorption coefficients to physically plausible impedances. And that's based on research coming out of DTU as well. Sound source modeling, um, non-trivial problem, uh, being able to model directional sound sources in both these simulation engines is quite a task, but uh, this is now possible as well. And we will, with time, go into more sort of electroacoustic uh, modeling as well, so you can model sound systems in rooms and things like that. And then oralizations, as mentioned, interactive, move the head, uh, see the space, change things on the fly and stuff like that you can do. And this way communicate uh, acoustics more effectively to stakeholders who maybe don't relate so well to acoustic parameters and so on. There's been some research done on uh, the perceptual realism of, of oralizations using these kinds of uh, methods. Uh, this is coming out of the University of Edinburgh, where they compared, did a perceptual study of comparing wave geometric hybrid oralizations versus geometrical acoustics only oralizations. 
and the results were quite unequivocal that people trended towards finding that the hybrid approach sounded more realistic than the GA only results. Okay, so that was the tech itself. Wave geometric hybrid approach with an efficient wave engine, boundaries modeled with impedances in a more precise way, oralizations based in the cloud so you can do many simulations simultaneously, and so on. So to wrap it up, just show you a couple of benchmark examples. Um, actually, I will show you three. Uh, the first one is where we used uh, some measurements from a public database called the Benchmark for Room Acoustic Simulations, uh, where we have, a s this is a rather controlled scenario, but still a tricky one to simulate, where we have a sound source that emits a wave that hits us a rather complex surface and is reflected back to a, to a microphone. And this is tricky to simulate because it's kind of complex geometry, so you will have some wave effects with sound bending around and diffracting and so on around this diffusive surface. And if we look at some results, if we first turn to the figure here on the right, which comes from the paper written by the authors of the, of the database, then they compared various geometric acoustic simulations tools to, uh, to the measurement. So we're looking at the frequency response here from the source to the receiver. And we see that none of these tools are really able to capture the measured uh, frequency response because they don't handle complex geometries and wave phenomena so well at lower frequencies. However, if you do a, a wave simulation with a method that can do complex geometries, then this uh, matches very well. Okay, second benchmark is a, a small room study we did at, at Treble. Uh, small rooms are actually tricky to simulate. It might sound a, size, might sound a bit counterintuitive, uh, but it's actually kind of easier to simulate bigger rooms uh, than small rooms. In small rooms, we have more modal behavior, and uh, also here we have like parallel hard reflecting surfaces, which can be tricky to simulate as well. And we also, in this case, had a directional sound source uh, in the measurements. And we measured uh, various source receiver configurations where the receiver was either a monaural free field microphone or a binaural Keymar mannequin. And then I'll just show you a bunch of results. First, looking at some impulse responses. It's hard to, to gauge exactly how good uh, the match is here, but we see that all these early reflections are captured quite well uh, in the simulation uh, and the sort of overall energy decay pattern as well is, is well captured. If we look at frequency response, we see the low frequency modal behavior of, of the space is also captured pretty well in the wave simulation, and the sort of high frequency trend of, of, the, of the response as well is captured. And then some energy decay curves uh, matching well at different frequencies between measurements and simulations. Resulting acoustic parameters, uh, this is T20 reverberation time and early decay time, uh, also showing a rather good match. And finally, some binaural responses, uh, so for a couple of for different ear signals uh, when measured with the Keymar and simulated. Uh, and then also we see a very nice match and kind of see the different amplitudes, for example, of the first reflections depending on which side the, the you know the, which ear is facing the source and, and so on. So that was that, and then uh, the last study I want to show you is uh, something we did in collaboration with Covey, which is an engineering consulting firm, where they were considering a typical open plan office and uh, doing renovations of that. So this is kind of the scenario after the renovations, and they used this platform to, uh, to do some simulations and then did some measurements to compare uh, how the simulations stacked up against the measurements. Here you can see uh, the 3D model in the in the tool and the material assignment that was used, and uh, some pictures from the measurements that they did, and then some results here in the low frequency range, where we see a very nice match between measurements and and simulations when using the wave approach. But then they also tried a geometric acoustic approach, and it didn't work as well in this case, at least. 
And then the last thing I wanted to show you is just a quick oralization from, from this space. Um, of course, it's meant to be listened to in headphones, so when we hear it here, then you know the acoustics of this space are added to the mix, so it's maybe a bit hard to hear the difference. But you will see uh, the user jumping between different positions, uh, looking around, and then switching between two scenarios. So either pre-treatment and then after treatment when, when uh, uh, partitions and acoustic ceiling and some things have been added to the mix. So let's take a look at that and I hope the sound comes through. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that's an example of how, how that can look. That was it for the presentation. Thanks so much for, for listening. I look forward to your questions.